A little different feeling on the campus here at Wake Forest these days and at bb and Field in Winston-Salem because the Demon Deacons are ranked number 20 in the nation today, taking on the Rebels of Ole Miss. And hi, everybody. Glad to have you along. Terry Gannon along with David Nor. And now let's see. There's one team out of the ACC that is ranked, and it's Wake Forest. And on the other side, you've got the man from Little Rock, Arkansas, Houston Nutt, who spent a decade at the helm for Arkansas. He's the head coach at Ole Miss. Forgive us if we think we're operating in a bit of a parallel universe right now, David. But let's look at Wake Forest and Jib Grove. What a remarkable turnaround it's been here. Uh, playing in a league with the talent of the likes of a Florida State, a Miami, a Virginia Tech. Uh, Jib Grove has been nothing short of a miracle worker. This program had not won a conference championship in 37 years. And up until two years ago, only championship in 37 years and up until two years ago only once did this program win eight games over the last two seasons Jim Grobe has won 20 games and I think you got to give a lot of credit to his quarterback Riley Skinner when you talk about effectiveness at the quarterback position I don't think there's a better player behind center in the United States of America than Riley Skinner very slick very accurate as a passer well and in Oxford right now they're more excited about the quarterback position than they've been since maybe Eli Manning was there because of Jevin Sneed. Well, Jevin Sneed, if you go back two years, he was involved in that tight freshman quarterback battle with Colt McCoy. Remember, they took over for Vince Young after the national title year at Texas, and he barely lost out in that competition. He truly is one of the best young talents with his throwing arm in college football. I think people down in Oxford have a lot to look forward to with this young quarterback, Terry. Skinner and Sneed, two good quarterbacks, Grobe and Nutt, two great coaches on the field today. We'll have the kick from Winston-Salem right after this message. Houston Nutt now in his second game. Last week, uh, a win against Memphis, 41 to 24. Solid, David. I'm not sure that when talking to the coaches how much they really found out in that game. And Jim Grobe on the other side after a win over Baylor, which was impressive, came out and said, I have no idea how good we are after one game. I don't think anybody really does. Well, this Mississippi team is really stocked well with talent. Ed Orgeron moves on, but he did a heck of a job recruiting for the Rebels, and I think this will be a good barometer for Jim Grobe in terms of where his program is in game number two. Ole Miss won the toss. They deferred to the second half. So Justin Sparks, the junior from Memphis, getting us underway and back deep for the Demon Deacons. Alfonso Smith, lightning in that defensive unit in the secondary for Wake Forest Day. And Devon Brown also back there, just a red shirt freshman. So we are underway here in Winston-Salem. Alfonso Smith. As it go through his hands and out of the end zone. I expect the tropical storm to win it. Really had some effect here, but it hasn't. We had some rain overnight, and that was about it. A little bit of breeze today, but not at all what they had expected. So here's the man, Riley Skinner, the junior from Jacksonville, Florida, and last year, the man who led the nation in completion percentage. As you check out the starting lineups up on the top of your screen, Mike Winfred, the starting fullback but an interesting look offensively they'll give you just about everything on offense David yeah they will and they do it mostly out of two backs and one tight end they're very multiple very versatile in their formation first and ten from the 20 and right back to the line of scrimmage that was it Josh Adams is starting at the tailback spot the ACC rookie of the year last year and that coming off of Riley Skinner being the ACC rookie of the year prior to that Adams, a sophomore from Cary, North Carolina, maybe an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes from here. So it is second down and 10 from the 20. Play action for Skinner, one on one. He's got a man wide open. It's DJ Bolden. Goes to one knee at the 35, so they'll move the chains. He had a big week last week against Baylor, a gain of 15. We check out now our Best Buy Impact players. Skinner, just a lunch pail quarterback, gets it done. Josh Adams, lightning last year, it's a great freshman year, set a number of freshman records. And DJ Bolden, who had a big game last week, had seven catches, but could have had much more than that. He had a few drops as well. First and 10 from the 35. 
We've got in motion. The ball's on the turf right at the line of scrimmage. It appeared that Skinner got it back, and he did. In that game last week, Wake Forest comes away after the first game of the season able to say we had no penalties on offense. That's almost unheard of. Yeah, they're very disciplined up front, and that was a question mark. Jim Bro Grove lost four starters off that offensive line, but the way he brings talent along and is patient with his talent, he's got a nice quality front five along that offensive line to start the 2008 season. Skinner was 12 of his first 13 last week against Baylor. We'll talk more about it. I know you love this guy as a college quarterback. Down he goes, though, at the 30, dropped for a loss. Jonathan Cornell, Zuzi, California, in there quickly. A Cornell, an inside linebacker. They bring him up on the line of scrimmage, and he comes off the edge on Skinner's blind side. Wake Forest fails to account for him with a blocker. Very rare that you'll see Riley Skinner take an unblocked man for a sack in the backfield. Cornell, one of those, uh, only a sophomore, but they say this guy will end up playing on Sundays. Brings up third and 16 from the 30 of Wake Forest. Out of the gun, Skinner flushed out, throws to the near side, complete across the 35, out across the 40. Rich Belton, the fullback out of the backfield. I think he's going to be just about a half yard short of the first down. It's going to depend on the mark. Well, this is a trademark of the Demon Deacons passing attack. They're not equipped to pick up third and longs regularly. And not unusual for Riley Skinner to drop the ball underneath and let his talented skill players advance the football. I thought for a moment like Jim Grubb was trying to make a decision on fourth and one, but it's early in the game. The ball is at the 45. The the team will come on. And I think this is the right decision. You're inside the 50 yard line. Sam Swank, one of the best in college football. And as a place kicker, back deep and hit. Marche Green hit before he could get it. Scramble in Wake Forest saying it's their football. It may have hit one of the Ole Miss players prior to getting to green, and that's the way it's ruled. Chip Vaughn, the free safety down there to pounce on it. And the question here is, did Wake Forest interfere? And it looked like that might have been Vaughn that drove an Ole Miss blocker Back into the returner here. And that was Vaughn. So Vaughn makes contact with the Ole Miss blocker who goes into green and hits the blocker and the uh, ball's loose. And the Demon Deeks come up with it. So a huge break. First and 10 from the 14th. Skinner out of the gun. With time, with room to run. Waiting for someone to get open, then throws it away. Good coverage. Well, it was defense. It was creating turnovers. That's what Wake Forest really hung its hat on last year. Uh, Wake's done a great job, obviously, on offense, but the defense has been very potent as well for Jim Grobe. Remember the 44 touchdowns scored a year ago. It's a turnaround for a Wake Forest program. It used to be a perennial doormat. In this conference. They were an afterthought. I mean, this was a basketball school. Play action. Skinner has a man in the end zone. There's a touchdown. Kevin Harris, fullback out of the backfield. And right on the money with Skinner. First touchdown catch of the year, first catch of the season for Harris, the junior from Sanford, Florida, and it's 6 0. So Sam Swank, who's made 111 straight, point after. Now for the extra point. Right through the center, and the Demon Deeks off and rolling. Back here in Winston-Salem, 7-0 Wake Forest. Ole Miss backed up at their own six. Dexter McCluster, the man who was really the star last week, and they had uh, the Wild Rebel formation in a number of times. This time off the left side. 
Eason tripped up right at the line of scrimmage. But you had Darren McFadden, you had the Wild Hog at Arkansas, and Houston Nutt has brought that with him, and it's now called the Wild Rebel in Oxford. Well, Dexter McCluster might not be Darren McFadden. There might not be another Darren McFadden out there at the college or the pro level, but McCluster, number 22, is very, very competent at that position. I think we're going to see him a lot taking direct snaps this afternoon. Split out wide right this time, not lined up as quarterback, and he is right at the 10-yard line and hit hard after the completion. You would check that out on our Best Buy playbook and what it used to look like and what it looks like now. Well, if you go back to Houston Nuts last game, coaching Arkansas. How about this win on the road against LSU, the number two team in the country, Darren McFadden. And then last week, McCluster working behind center. And with Bolden, the speedy true freshman, you got a couple threats that really make defensive coordinators stay up late at night. Give you another look with that tailback lining up at quarterback. Not so this time, though. It is Snead who steps up, has some room. Powers his way, but maybe just shy. We'll see what they mark it. He had to get outside the 15 to the 16. Aaron Curry, the senior from Fayetteville, North Carolina, on the hit. Houston not, not too excited about being about a half yard short here. I don't think Sneed was able to pick up the first down. Take a look at the 10 seasons. Houston Nutt, three SEC West Division titles, a couple appearances in the SEC championship game as they bring the chains out. But I think Sneed might be just a couple lengths short. Or maybe nope. not. I mean, it did look like it at first, and he got a favorable spot. Now you, you watched Houston Nutt's reaction down on the sideline, and I think Coach Nutt wasn't convinced that they had picked up the first down. We saw some toughness there, Terry, from Jevin Sneed. And, and when we visited with Houston Nutt earlier this week, he talked about how his young quarterback sat in and took shots last week against Memphis, kept his eyes trained down the field. Stayed in the pocket. So it's first and 10 from the 16, we call it now. Quick out to Wallace, wrapped up right behind. That's his second catch, and now the penalty marker comes in late. Alfonso Smith helping him up after knocking him down. Yeah, it looked like Wake Forest got a little aggressive with Wallace after the play was blown dead. This is probably going to be a 15-yarder against the Demon Deeks. Yeah, Chip Vaughn's been active so far in a positive way and now on the negative side. Well aggressiveness really characterizes this defensive unit. We talked about the experience but yeah that is leading with the helmet. Sneed's going to take a hit. On delivery, I thought that was clean, but you cannot lead with the crown of the helmet. And there's been emphasis during the offseason on that rule. Yeah, been a lot of attention to that this year. Brandon Bolden gets the carry, the true freshman from Baton Rouge. Wallace going back a play ago on that personal foul as Ole Miss jumps into the Rebel for the first time. But, you know, a defenseless ball carrier cannot be held up with other defenders bearing down with that helmet. Yeah, Vaughn, who's a senior, Smith, who's a senior, Patterson, a senior, and Brandon G., who's a junior in that secondary for Wake Forest. They have jumped off sides. Here comes Curry. No flags, incomplete. I guess he's just that quick. <laughs> David Traxler, the intended receiver, but he was halfway across the line. Well, Aaron Curry is one of the top two or three linebackers in the country, certainly in the senior ranks. And Jevin Sneed got a taste of his speed on the blitz. Watch how quick he gets there. And a great play by Sneed just to unload the ball. Almost gets himself a completion. Curry, who had four interceptions for touchdowns last year. He and Alfonso Smith, that's a big part of their game. Third and nine out of the gun. Sneed fires it near sideline. Good catch. Wallace hauls it in and a big game. The Wake Forest territory at the 37. 
Well, it was a heck of a catch, but we're getting a look at the arm of Jevin Snead. Too. Well, I, I do not know if there are many quarterbacks in the country that have this type of talent with the arm. This is a fade route that's thrown on the line. He gets the ball quick before the safety can come over the top. He gets the ball quickly to the outside, and we saw on the over-the-top post ball on the first possession, the arm of a Snead, and now it's like they're jumping in the Rebel again. The cluster, it's a direct snap. They're going to run the reverse. Here comes Snead looking to throw it downfield, coming back this way. It's Bolden inside the five to the three, and the flag at the end of the play. Hard to keep up with that one, and a gain of 33. Well, this is just one of the many looks that Houston Nutt will give you. The handoff from McCluster to Bolden, and then Bolden continues the route down the field. And there's that hand to the back of the no jersey. Foul on the play. No horse collar. First down. Okay. I was going to call it a horse collar, and they say, don't call it a well, horse collar. Well, they initially called it, and they decided to pick the flag up. You can get the hand inside the back of the collar just as long as you don't violently pull the ball carrier down if you ride him they're going to pick the flag up out of the eye Snead got two men in the end zone picks one that's a touchdown Gerald Harris the tight end and then this was an impressive drive by the Rebels and they should be excited in Oxford about their quarterback and Sneed is attacking all areas of the field with his arm, and he's showing us that he can make all the throws. Post routes, balls up the sideline on fades. And that last play, the touchdown, showed that he could throw the ball with accuracy on the move. Joshua Sheen, the junior from Oklahoma City, on for the extra point. Up and good. So Ole Miss has an answer. Nine play drive that went 94 yards, David. And Houston not, not afraid to show you some conventional drop back passing as we look at the roll to his right. Ball placement was excellent. He comes back to his second choice in the back of the end zone. Finding Harris and Sneed has to be excited about the rhythm that he's achieved in the first half here. Hey, David, if you're Brad Lambert, the defensive coordinator for Wake Forest now, after what you just saw, you're thinking, what else can I see today? I've seen a little bit of everything. Pass happy on the first drive. Second drive, they start running the football at their own six, throwing it, reversed, wild hog, a little bit of everything for Houston Nutt. Should remind you, near the conclusion of today's game, we'll select the Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund, as they have done for many, many years. Got the feeling this is going to be a pretty good one. Well, and I, we did not really see this from Jevin Sneed a week ago. You watched the tape of the Memphis game. He missed some balls. He was a little bit jacked up in terms of his emotions and his adrenaline, but he has settled down in this football game against a very tough defense on the road. And I have been really excited about his throwing talent early in this football game. Alfonso Smith, Devon Brown back deep. It's Smith from his own two. Coming back this way. And runs right in to an Ole Miss tackler and down at the 23-yard line. Good matchup between the ACC and the SEC today here at Wake Forest. 7-7. Jevin Sneed and the Old Miss Rebels. The offense now facing the wind, which has picked up a little bit. They run straight off tackle. Brandon Bolden, the freshman, on the carry as we check out our Pacific Life game summary, David. And Jevin Sneed with a hot start. First quarter, 8 for 11. 101 yards. They've been pretty efficient on third down conversions. Really, the big play that has kept Wake Forest in a tie game, the fumble on the punt return by the Rebels. Yeah, and it's tough to blame. You can't really blame Marche Green. He never really touched the football. The man was blocked right into him. It was an odd turnover. First and ten, play action for Sneed. Looking over the middle, he's got his man hit hard as McCluster, but he holds on. And he's got a first down. Second catch of the afternoon for Dexter McCluster. Now, this is sharp. 
Execution in the backfield by Jevin Sneed. He's going to turn his back to the defense with the play fake and a crisp delivery. And he is able to effortlessly snap those throws off. McCluster, nice job of going up and securing the football first. Under center now is Sneed. Straight drop, quick throw, and incomplete Shea Hodge, a diving attempt, but finding a seam in that defense. We mentioned ACC against SEC, and talking to the Wake Forest players this week, as you look at the wind now picking up here, 20 miles per hour they're telling us, so it is a bit of a factor this afternoon. The Wake Forest players do take this as a game of honor standing up for the ACC. Not much success so far for the ACC this year, and they view this as a big one. Sneed under pressure, throws set up the screen, read perfectly. Aaron Curry got there, timed it well, and applied the big hit. Michael Carter was the man who applied the pressure. Well, and Sneed was forced to hang on to this ball. And again, you see how he has a touch to drop the ball over defenders. And right at the bottom of your screen, number 59, Aaron Curry. One of the top three or four linebackers in the country reading the play all the way and delivering a blow when he arrives. So it's third and ten. Ole Miss has been pretty good on third down so far. Time for Sneed. Finds his man a little bit behind him, but good catch by Dexter McCluster. They'll move the chains. He beat Alfonso Smith. Well, excellent time given to Sneed up front. This offensive line is working very effectively. And then Dexter McCluster runs very sharp routes out of the slot position, squares the route off, and again, an NFL-type throw by Sneed. He's going to be catching the eyes of some scouts as an underclassman before too long. Gain of 17, the Wild Rebel. There goes Bolden, bouncing outside, trying to get to the marker. He does, knocked out of bounds. They'll move the chains again. <laughs> Georgia fans not at all happy about the fact that they dropped from number one to number two. Not sure it's a bad thing, though. It takes a little pressure off. You don't have to think about yeah. it. It's early. Trojans Time. were pretty, pretty impressive against the Wahoos. Timeout Ole Miss. Back in a moment. Second and short coming up for Ole Miss. Jevin Sneed, 11 of 15, 132 yards and a touchdown. Not in at quarterback right now. The Wild Rebel, Bolden. Going to keep it himself across the 30. Should have the first down. Sneed throws off his back foot to the end zone. Just threw it up. Touchdown. Shea Hodge on the jump ball went up and wrestled it in. 28 yards. He was out there with Alex Fry, the sophomore from Fayetteville, as Snead just threw it up into the air and thought, well, come back and get this one. Now, Shea Hodge is one of the best receivers in the SEC when he has to go up and get the football. Had a tremendous catch and run for a touchdown last week against Memphis. Sheen. On for the extra point. And gets it up in good. Yeah, thank you, Matt. So uh, didn't do much here in Winston Salem, at least. Did a lot on the eastern parts of this state. Ben Wooster with the catch and another first down for Wake Forest. But uh, Hannah wreaking some havoc up north. Yeah, this is a sharp ball from Riley Skinner. And Wooster is a matchup problem for defenses. They're the first time we've seen Wooster get involved out on the perimeter. And he's a type of tight end that can run, create mismatches with linebackers when you look at his size and his ability to stride. Yeah, at first glance, he looks like a wide receiver out there with his speed. And you check it, he's 6'5", 235. 
Brett, the fullback in motion. Adams, room to the outside. Just brought down at the 17. The ball's loose, but he was down. Cassius Vaughn may have saved a touchdown. And while we have a moment, I'm going to ask you our Aflac trivia question this afternoon. You ready, David? I'm always ready. All right, when was the last time Ole Miss went to a bowl game? They're going to have to you come with some one. tougher stuff one. than that downstairs. <laughs> I mean, that they're lobbing the softballs up here. I got that one down. Josh Adams stopped by Emmanuel Stevens. I'll give you one. I'll give you one right now. This is not the official athlete. There's a guy named Sneed. Are you going off the board? Remember, starring? Remember, you remember Joker's Wild? That's you're going off, the, going board off the board for 100? A guy named Sneed starring at quarterback today. There was a famous Sneed who once starred right here. Who was it? Another Sneed. And I'm not talking JC. Oh, I thought you were talking golf. Norm, Norm Sneed. Right here at Wade. Back in the late 50s, early 60s. I was going to guess Sam. Bolden with the catch over the middle. That's a first down inside the 10. All right, so our answer to today's Aflac trivia question, I think Eli. mine's a little better, but. Eli in the cotton. 2003 season. 2004 Cotton Bowl, 2003 season. You're right, against Oklahoma State. Eli Manning running the show. And Sneed is not going to make them forget about the name Manning, whether it's Eli or Archie. Speed limit is 18 on campus. But uh, well, I'll tell you, he's got him excited for the first time in a while. Skinner looking for room, run out at the seven. Again, couldn't find anyone open. Tony Fine ran him out of bounds. Well, those are the types of plays that don't show up on the highlight reel, but get you in good shape for a second and goal situation. Riley Skinner, the ability to pull the football down, pick up a couple yards, and get his offense in good position to look at the next couple of downs in the red zone. Adams, the sophomore, the lone setback. Gonna get it. Powers his way inside the five to the three. Jonathan Cornell had help on the tackle. Got there first. Steve Lobotsky, the offensive coordinator for Wake Forest, searching for ways up front to get the right fits with his blockers on defenders. Still searching for the key to get Jim Grobe's running offense in gear and taking some time to make this call big third and goal coming up 15th play of the drive closing out the first half if you let riley skinner have a run pass option long count skinner looking for somebody throws low stopped at the four complete but they're going to lose a yard so it brings up fourth and goal 30 seconds and counting dustin muson on the tackle. Yeah, and I don't understand that route. Uh, Josh Adams does not have the depth along the goal line. And if your running back does not have the depth, I don't know why Riley Skinner necessarily chose him so quickly. Skinner had some time. He had the ability to move on in the route, pick a second or a third choice. 62 career field goals, the active leader in a 21-yard try coming up for Sam Swank. That is their first time out of the first half. So Wake will burn the timeout. Interesting. Trying to get people on the field, perhaps. We'll see. Swank coming back with a field goal try when we come back. Back here in Winston-Salem, four seconds, and the clock was running as we went to uh, Brad's. Why we had the timeout from Jeff Grove, obviously. And Sam Swank out there, one of the best in college football. There's no question about it. Made six straight, made 62 in his career. This just a 21 yard try. And another one up and good for Swain. We had Luis Sincota in our game last week from Utah, who was the star of the game, one of the best in college football, and now get a look at Swank this week. Yeah, a couple dual purpose special teams performers. 
responsibilities as punter and place kicker. I think you got to give the edge to Louis Sakota because he's such a dynamic punter, over 44 yard average. He does do a lot of that up at altitude in Salt Lake City, but how effective yeah, was he good. at the big house? There's last no altitude week. in Ann Arbor. So. No. <laughs> hey, we mentioned it. The ACC, SEC motivation, especially for the ACC guys, for Wake Forest this week, they're the only team, for the first time ever, they're the only team out of the ACC ranked. BCS Bowls, the ACC, they've lost eight straight. Bobby Bowden, of course, seeking his 374th career win. But Florida State hasn't held their end of the bargain overall since coming in. And Miami certainly hasn't. So they take on number five Florida tonight. What, what about the ACC and where it is right now? Well, I think when people want to search for answers and why it's been so long since they team from the ACC has had a BCS victory. The fact that Wake Forest is the only team that's ranked, Terry, I think you look squarely at Miami and Florida State. You know, they have not held up their end of the bargain. Going back to Miami's consecutive appearances in the national title game, 2001-2002, they just have not been the same two programs. I remember when Florida State dominated this league when it came in, but that first loss at Virginia was like the floodgates were open and then everybody else believed they had a chance to beat Florida State but then they make it a super league and you expect it to challenge the SEC and the, the guys at the top you're right I think it, you do point to them and uh, they haven't okay. held it up well, somebody would have walked up to you three or four years ago and said Wake Forest was going to be the top team in the ACC especially with teams like Miami and Virginia Tech joining this 12 team league well, there were times yeah, years I think ago we'd say they were crazy when I when I would come to games here and, and it would be half full and they didn't have Deacon Tower until recently till now actually and it, it would look at times like a Friday night high school football game. Now that's been a while that's, and they, they've turned that around for a while now but Jim Grove in the last few years has taken this program off the chart. Yeah, you could make the argument he's done the most with the least of any coach in the country. Brandon Bolden back deep. Got to get there. Yeah, it finally does. Bringing it back to the 18 yard line. Thought for a moment he was going to take too much time and let somebody else get to that ball. It's a live ball. So, great offensive showing in the first half for Ole Miss and Jevin Sneed. Put 14 points on the board, but Wake hasn't gone away. Riley Skinner coming back to put up at least a field goal before. Halftime, look at the numbers so far. I think we found out why the competition two years ago between Colt McCoy and Jevin Sneed was as close as it was. And I think Riley Skinner, now you look at his numbers, it didn't seem like he went 14 for 18, not a lot of yards, but I think this is going to be an exciting game in the second half, especially in the passing games for both teams, Terry. Yeah, the offensive really setting the tone here. 14 10, your halftime score, Wake Forest number 20, uh, being upset at home right now, but Demon Deeks trying to come back. In the second half. Gorgeous afternoon here in Winston-Salem, and it's Ole Miss on the road with a four-point lead, 14-10 over Wake Forest here at the half. Hi, everybody. Glad to have you with us once again. Terry Gannon along with David Norrie. Good exhibition in the first half from both quarterbacks, but especially Jevin Snead. Well, talk about truth and advertising I think Jevin Sneed comes as advertised he showed us all the throws in the first half he really showed us why he was so close to Colt McCoy in that freshman competition a couple years back with Texas Skinner keeping him close though and uh, got that field goal right before the break for Wake Forest we check out right now a Pacific Life game summary and uh, what took place in the first half and that turnover early really set things up this is a legal play too. the blocker being driven right into the man who's waiting to catch that punt and then taking advantage to Kevin Harris Skinner goes 14 yards to the end zone. Riley Skinner looked sharp early but it was Jevin Sneed who really shined in the second quarter finding Harris in the back of the end zone and this was a terrific play escaping the blitz the corner blitz from Alfonso Smith going down the field and Shea Hodge what a play he's got terrific hops gets up in the air uses his body and a lot of weapons on offense for Ole Miss that we haven't seen in years past, Terry. And it's big here to open up the second half because of how effective the offense has been. Ole Miss deferred early on, so they will receive the second half opening kickoff. As the shadows start to creep across the field here 
at BB&T Field. Brandon Bolden back deep, eight yards deep to one knee, and they'll bring it out to the 20 to start the first offensive series of the second half. So Sneed, the sophomore from Stephenville, Texas, who started his career at Texas, lost out on that starting QB spot to Colt McCoy. Sneed, 13 of 17 for 165 yards in the touchdowns. Dexter McCluster, you can't keep up with him. I mean, you can't cover that guy with his speed. And Michael Orr allowing that offensive line or leading the offensive line to allow Sneed to have time to throw. And if you're the Wake Forest defensive staff, if you're Brad Lambert, the defensive coordinator, you're looking at that first half thinking, boy, they beat us in a number of different ways with a number of different players. Where do we stop here? Sneed play action on first and ten. Wide open coming this way with the catch and a first down is Cordera Eason. Sneed shows such a nice understanding of the passing game on that last play. He checks the curl route to the short side of the field. It's crowded inside and he just checks down underneath to the receiver in the flat. Made it look so smooth. Gain of 14 on first down. So they move the chains and it's first and 10 from the 34. Well, you got Shea Hodge to throw to. We made the great catcher already in the end zone. Mike Wallace, the veteran, the senior from New Orleans. Gerald Harris got touchdown catch at that tight end spot. Here goes Eason trying the line and stopped right at the line of scrimmage. May have lost one. Well, Wake Forest has some flexibility on defense because of their cornerbacks. And they have the ability to lock up outside with Alfonso Smith. Brandon G, and that allows Wake Forest to get an extra hat into the box to outnumber the blockers for Ole Miss, and I think they're going to have to do some of that in the second half to slow down Houston Nuts' run game. And as the day wears on, that offensive line, as big as it is, wears on the defensive front. And especially that left side with Orr anchoring things at the left tackle position. Second and ten. Keith Summers goes in motion to the far side. The pressure, Sneed going to tuck it and run close to a first down. Kevin Sneed May have been keeper. stopped just shy. We'll see where they mark it, but a gain Stop of nine. Well, Sneed has really shown some nimbleness, the ability to step out of some crowded situations in the pocket. Watch him step up inside, avoid the rush, and again, ducks inside and picks up positive yardage really opens up the playbook for you on a third and short. So it's third and one. They go to the Wild Rebel. Here comes Sneed. Wide to the near side. Bolden's got a first down and more. Brandon across midfield before he's driven out of bounds by Alfonso Smith. <laughs> they give you a lot of looks up front, Terry. They can go with the direct snap to Dexter McCluster. They can use the true freshman Bolden as they did on that last snap. And this Ole Miss offense has the ability to throw a lot at you and a lot to prepare for during a week, a practice week. Watch Bolden. And look how big and strong he is stepping through tackles. And a different look than you get from Cordera Eason. Got more speed. Wild Rebel again, and it's Bolden. Right at the line of scrimmage blocked down, maybe a gain of one. But even a different look out of that Wild Rebel, as they call it now, that they had last week. So if you're watching tape, and you're a Demon Deacon defensive coach, and what they did last week, it was McCluster who was the guy back there. Yeah, they only snapped it directly to Bolden a couple times, and Jevin Sneed typically doesn't come off the field. He splits out wide, and we've seen him today get involved in a, in a throwback down the field out of the Wild Rebel. Last week, he was a receiver on a big play down yeah. the field. 37-yard pass he caught last week. Under center, out of the eye now. So they change the look again. Bolden right up the gut. And a good gain across the 45 down to the 43. That was Eason actually that time who carried it. 5'10 junior from Meridian, Mississippi. Third and four. Sneed going up top. Good coverage and it's picked off. At the 24, it's Kevin Patterson. They confirmed the decision on the field, so it's an incomplete pass. Williams' foot was out of bounds when he made the catch, so it brings up second and ten. They announced it while we were away. Josh Adams looking for room, fights his way to the 
three yard line. Take another look now at Williams. Well, and Williams a little bit sloppy, a little lazy with the feet. You're supposed to drag that left foot. Of course, we got an assistant on the sideline in the way there. That could have brought a five yard penalty, the new sideline warning. That wasn't it's just no an assistant. Warning. That was a big assistant. Yeah, that coach. was an assistant that went over three bills. You know, it's a brick wall on the sideline. Third and almost nine. So Adams, tailback in there out of the gun. Skinner under pressure, lost one up. Bolden's out there. Can he make the catch? Yeah. And the flags come in too. So there's an answer to Shea Hodge and what he did earlier. The seventh catch of the afternoon for DJ Bolden. Uh, and that is the DJ Bolden that Jim Grobe has been waiting for for three years here in Winston Salem. Pass interference, number 12 of the defense. That penalty is declined. First down. And first of all, Riley Skinner puts this ball where only DJ Bolden can get to it. Bolden doing a great job with his body and going up and taking the football away from Dustin Muzon, an experienced corner. Looked a lot like his older brother Anquan Bolden. Plays down in Phoenix, Arizona. One of the best young receivers in the NFL. Gain of 26, so it's first and 10 from the 17. Adams slices through down close to the 11. Ashley Palmer on the stop but Bolden a guy who you know you look at this offense and say the one thing they really need to replace is a big play guy Kenny Moore set the ACC record and Bolden only had 11 catches last year I mean he's the guy who may fill those that void but it's a different type of offense too it's not geared towards one guy you know, they lose a lot of production they lose Kenny Moore they lose a couple talented tight ends of course four star starters along the offensive line as well. Give it right to Adams, straight into the line, down to the 10. So it's going to bring up third down. They've got to get to about the seven for a first down. And when you try to answer that question of how do you replace the production of a Kenny Moore, 98 balls for Jim Grove, I, I think what you do is you allow Riley Skinner to move the ball around. And you know, with the play of Shea Hodge as well as the play of a Bolden outside. Well, check that. <laughs> Sorry about that. Not Shea Hodge, of course, plays for Ole Miss, but Bolden, as well as Marshall Williams, you got a nice compliment to take over for Kenny Moore. Third and three. Harrison motion, play action. Skinner to the end zone, broken up, incomplete. Big time play by Marche Green. Got a hand in there as Ben Wooster had a step on it. This was an impressive play in the corner of the end zone by Marche Green. It looked like Wooster had him beat to the pylon. A pretty nice throw from Riley Skinner. But Green closed on it and got that right hand over the shoulder of Wooster. 27 yarder now for Sam Swink, who connected on a 21 yarder earlier in the ball game. High snap. It's down, up. And it is good. Again. Great setting here in Winston-Salem on the campus of Wake Forest. One of the smaller schools playing college football at this level. Less than 5,000 undergrads here at Wake. But some big time programs. Obviously the, the hoops program has always been a good one and now football matching it in terms of excitement on campus this time of the year. So back deep for Ole Miss. Brandon Bolden at his own five. Bolden coming up to the seven and dropped it. Swarmed under then at the 14. Tough place for Ole Miss to start their next series. Handoff given to Enrique Davis. 
may have gained a yard or two. And we mentioned the fact that Ole Miss is getting into the act as well. David's got a T-shirt right here, uh, which they've already printed up. So they're, they're, they're getting some publicity already for the debate. What's the date on it? September 26th. Well, I wanted to present you with this, Terry. You follow <laughs> this stuff so closely. And I think you're going to be able to watch this from the comfort of your own living room out in Los Angeles. I love the shirt, but I, did you wear it already? Or? No, I don't think I'd fit into this. This is a large, Terry. All right, thank you. This very, is all you, baby. Much. First gift I've ever gotten from my partner here in, uh, in the booth in a couple of years. 37 million people watched the, uh, the one in 2000, as I mentioned. And I'd imagine at least that many will watch the debates coming up over the next couple of weeks. Davis stopped cold. So the defense for Wake now getting them out of their seats here in BBT Field. Third and seven. as loud as it's been this afternoon. Sneed has time, tipped at the line of scrimmage. Batted down by Anthony Davis, 6'5", 251 pounder, and a senior from Columbia, South Carolina. Well, the season defensive outfit for Wake Forest has been able to turn the tide. They were having problems with the Rebel run game in the first half. They were having problems controlling the Wild Rebel formation. In the second half, they have responded across the board. Rob Park on the punt. High snap. Nice play. Alfonso Smith. End over end punt at midfield. Looking for room. Can he get outside? He does, initially at least, but Kendrick Lewis ran him down there. Both have great speed. Punt of 31 yards and a return by Smith. First and 10 at the 41. Ole Miss showing blitz. They back out of it. Skinner reads it over the middle, complete, and Wooster, the tight end from Atlanta. His third catch today. Chris Paul in the house. Great Hoopster here at Wake and now with the Hornets. NBA Rookie of the Year, almost won the MVP, was the ACC Rookie of the Year. Only played a couple years at Wake. Top, man, five, top five pick, what? Man, man could shoot it. He's got a pretty nice handle to go along with that shooting touch. Second and six on the option. Skinner's going to keep it. Pendergrass. We'll see where they mark it. And to get to the 31. So Chris Paul. Down there watching on the sideline. He was throwing some passes before the game, by the way. Looked pretty good. And actually, he's got a headset on right now. Chris, you with us? Yes, I am. Hey, what's it like to be down there on the sideline? You got the jersey on with your name on the back, I saw, too. Yeah, man. I actually spent the day with the team. You know, I went to their breakfast this morning, was in the locker room with them before the game, and uh, it's been an experience. What do you think about the action down there? What do you think about uh, this team, the senior-laden team this year, a lot of experience, top team in the ACC right now? Now, you know, Alfonso is the leader of this team, and I think they have a lot of confidence right now. I mean, we've got a great crowd uh, down one right now, but they're going to find a way to pull this out. How do you like this decision, uh, perhaps, to go for it, fourth and one? I love it. If it was up to me, we'd always go for it on fourth and one. <laughs> All right, let's check this out. We'll get right back to you, Chris, but uh, right. out of the eye, here's Skinner under center. Bolden in motion. And Brett, the fullback, fights his way. He should have it. Almost got to the 30. The defense celebrating, but looked like the forward motion got him close to the 30-yard line. Forward progress. Yep, and got it. Hey, listen, he had the experience in college, obviously, at a high level in the ACC, the NBA. How about internationally now, the Olympics? Man, it, it was unbelievable, you know, to go over there and represent our country. You know, when you, when you go and you play on a team like that, you represent more than Wake Forest, more than the New Orleans Hornets. And to bring the goal back to, to the USA is what we went over there for. First and ten for Skinner. Here comes Wooster in motion. Hendergrass. Good hole. Down to the 25. 
Uh, we, you can't see it, but we're taking a look at some photos right now uh, with the Hornets and then at the Olympics. I know, too, you're in town for a special cause, right? You're raising some money? Yes, yes. You know, my foundation, we, we do a lot of things here in Winston-Salem uh, to give back to the community and things like that. So coming up the 18th through the 21st, I have a celebrity uh, bowling event. Entire weekend with a, with a dinner, with bowling. And a lot of guys that are my friends throughout the NBA get a chance to come to my hometown. Quick out to Bolden, complete at Man. the 25. Now he's had a big afternoon, had a big day last week in the opener, as a matter of fact, but that's his eighth catch this afternoon. So the, the Pro-Am bowling is going to be going to air on ESPN, correct? Yes, yes. It'll be myself with four other guys in the NBA, and we're going to bowl with five professional bowlers because there's a lot of guys in the league that talk, talk junk about bowling, so we're going to put an end to all of it and, <laughs> and, see, and see who really means business on ESPN. No more. I'm going to check that out and see what, uh, what kind of game you got there. You got uh, a lot of game in terms of hoops, I'll tell you that. Going to the end zone. Touchdown. Yeah. Marshall Williams with the catch. I might need to talk on him more often because we score touchdowns when I'm on here. There you go. Yeah. He beat Cash's ball into the corner of the end zone. Chris Paul with the commentary. First catch of the afternoon from Marshall Williams, 34 yards to the end zone. Swank on for the extra point. He don't miss those. No. Nope. And he doesn't. Came in with 111 straight coming into the game. So Williams the touchdown catch and Wake Forest taking the lead over Ole Miss. David take a look. There man Mr. Paul like a rabbit's foot for this Wake Forest <laughs> offense and this is a beautiful fade ball. A nice job by Skinner leading Williams to the pylon. And just beats Cassius Vaughn to the corner. Nice pitch and catch. Chris, I know the Wake fans want you to stay on because you brought them a touchdown, but we'll let you go enjoy the game. Uh, have a good afternoon. Thanks again for joining us. So Chris Paul, star in the NBA for Wake and now for the Olympics and watching his Demon Deacons take the lead. Skinner right on target. Uh, Jim Grobe's team showing a lot of resolve in the second half. The defense has reacted with some pressure. They've not allowed Jevin Sneed the rhythm that he had in the first half and I think Riley Skinner and this Demon Deacon offense has found a way to attack the Ole Miss front seven. They've used a lot of first and second down short passes in obvious rundowns to create rhythm offensively. So Darren Eason watches it sail through the end zone. They'll bring it out to the 20, and we'll see if the offense for Ole Miss has an answer. A couple interceptions already in this second. Fourth and 17. So Rob Park on the punt for Ole Miss. Alfonso Smith back deep at his own 32-yard line. So we have to really be leery of an Alfonso Smith. Going to back him up with this one all the way back to his own 15. Flags, balls loose, Ole Miss on top of it. It's going to be Ole Miss ball. This is a blocking infraction against Wake Forest on the return. Big time turnover if it stands as Smith puts it on the turf. 57 yard punt. And this would be Ole Miss ball right at the 30. Blocking the back. Number 57 of the receiving team. The penalty will be declined. First down. And it does stand. Jamarcus Sanford, the man who caused the fumble. Well, we've seen Alfonso Smith so many times. Here's the block in the back. So many times on interceptions, fumble returns. He's such a dangerous ball carrier. And during the offseason, Jim Grove made the decision. Boy, he got a piece of the helmet there. I don't think he quite got the face mask, but. 
Jim Grove made the decision to have Alfonso Smith be the return man. He got to sometimes live by the sword and die by it. Marcus Temple, a freshman, came up with the recovered fumble. Run out of bounds. Right at the line of scrimmage, Brandon G with great speed in that secondary. He's the guy who ran down McCluster who had five yards on him. Yeah, not many people can run down a Dexter McCluster in the open field. The top players out of Florida a couple years back, a track athlete. Of course, Brandon's older brother, Patrick G, was a main cog in that 2006 Cinderella season. Orange Bowl appearance in an ACC championship for Wake Forest. And I believe in this year they can go back and win another ACC title. Sneed stepping up. Running out of time. Throws on the run. McCluster's wide open. Dexter gets to the end zone. Touchdown Ole Miss. Thirty-one yards. Plenty of Ole Miss fans on the road here in Winston-Salem to watch it. Joshua Sheen on for the extra point. We're tied up at 20 right now. Yep. And good. We had a feeling this was going to be a good one. Touchdown by Dexter McCluster a moment ago, and Ole Miss taking the lead by one, 21 to 20, in what has been an excellent college football game. I mean, every Just a aspect. Terrific game. Terrific game. And I think Ole Miss serving notice that they are not going to be the automatic victory in the SEC they were a year ago. Don Brown back deep, watching it go in and through the end zone to bring it out to the 20. Take another look at that last touchdown, David. Yeah, well, this is Dexter McCluster in the slot. And let's watch Jevin Sneed operate. Test the left side. Watch the feet. Go ahead and freeze it right here. All right, here's McCluster working to the open air. Look at all this open area. Sneed has done a great job keeping things alive. And another accurate throw on the run. Talk about acceleration after the catch. Right, that is a, a nice ball on the move. And how about McCluster with a burst to get into the painted area? So Riley Skinner, the junior from Jacksonville, Florida, and the Demon Deacon offense getting their chance now to answer, throwing it out. It was open, too. It's a little bit behind it, but that was Kevin Harris, the backup fullback, who had the first touchdown of the game. Couldn't hold on. And Riley missed one there. Take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Opening seven by Wake Forest, then Ole Miss answered with a couple of touchdowns, and Jevin Sneed has thrown three touchdowns on the afternoon. Big time afternoon for Sneed, and you look at Skinner's numbers, both quarterbacks, the straws that stir the drinks for these two programs. He's 20 of 26. Second and 10, that ball could have been caught a moment ago. Play action on the run out to Bolden. has got room around the edge across the 30-yard line. That's a first down Wake Forest. And the ninth catch of the game for D.J. Bolden. And they're starting to use Bolden a lot like the Cardinals and, and going back to Florida State the way that they utilize his older brother and Quan yeah. Bolden. Yeah. Such a terrific runner after the catch, his older brother. And D.J. starting to show some signs. He didn't feel good at all about the game last week that he had against Baylor even though he had seven catches he had a couple of drops missed time a couple of leaps and came in trying to prove something today and he has. Pendergrass big hole may have another first down a redshirt freshman from Royal Palm Beach Florida. Tackle made by Kendrick Lewis and Cassius Bowen. Well and this is go ahead and run it here watch how Pendergrass sets this up. And then let's take a freeze right here. Right here. Watch his lateral ability. Lateral ability to get outside. Then he sets up the north-south. Pendergrass has that lateral movement. Kind of reminiscent of a Barry Sanders. I like the first one. Lateral ability. Just combine yeah. it. That's, yeah. That should be a word. Well, it'll be a it'll, Webster's. It'll be all right here. 
Chip Brinkman with the catch. So this offense now really clicking. Second catch for him. Brinkman, the senior, with a hamstring problem, working his way back, but really the, the possession receiver, a guy they like to go to with sure hands. Now we talked about Kenny Moore, the 98 catches a year ago, but this offense really thrives on Riley Skinner's penchant for spreading the ball around. Brinkman's an important key to this offense. He doesn't have the speed, but he's a heck of a possession receiver. Andrew Parker goes to the other side. The backup tight end, who is just a freshman. Only three true freshmen playing this year for Jim Grove. Quick drop, quick throw. Brinkman near side, near another first down. Right in front of Cassius Vaughn. And it hasn't been an offense that's, or a game that's been all about offense. The defense on both sides making some big stops, coming up with a couple of picks, big plays, but each offense at different times has had an answer. Oh, exactly. Tyrone Nix, the defensive coordinator for Ole Miss, his defense has been very stiff against the run, forcing Riley Skinner. As Skinner waits for that check from the sidelines here, 42nd clock in play. Able to get that in. Noise not really a factor here. 31,000, so it, and it's spread. And you can hear from the sideline. Manuel Stevens, the stop. So 12-20 and counting here in the fourth. As we check out our ESPNU All-State standings review. So USC jumping up top after the win over Virginia. Georgia another win today. But Ohio State struggling. They were down late in that game. Florida taking on Miami, obviously. And that is tonight. They'll blow this one dead before it gets going. You got no problem with Georgia dropping after winning last week? No, I think that the Trojans were so impressive in Charlottesville against Virginia. Oh, that is the first time out of the second half. Now, people have argued this for a long time, but we still do it, whether or not you should even have rankings this early in the season. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of rankings until you get a good look at programs for four or five weeks. But at USC, I think hands down, they have the, the best talent in the country when you talk about their first 22. You don't think that'll be a good one next week, do you? Oh, the Coliseum? Now that is one of the games of the year. Highly anticipated is an understatement. The SEC with six teams that are ranked. The Pac-10 has four. Speaking of next week with USC, but the ACC with only one team that is ranked in the AP poll. And for the first time, the lone team from the ACC is Wake Forest. Yeah, and the non-BCS teams there, the two teams from the Mountain West, Utah and BYU creeping up into the top 20. And, of course, you have Fresno State. They look awfully powerful. Big test coming up against Wisconsin. And... Terry, I think we have them and have a chance the to UCLA Bruins down in L.A. on the 27th of September. Yeah, see them at the Rose Bowl. Speaking of the Bruins, that, that was, and that was another great college football game yeah, against doesn't Tennessee. Get, doesn't get much better in terms of excitement in that game. Hendergrass, big hole to the outside. Sanford runs him down, but inside the 30 at the 26. Stanford's going to get hit with a 15-yarder, a little aggressive riding Pendergrass out of bounds. He made a great play to take the angle away and potentially the touchdown away from Pendergrass, but he's going to get hit with a personal foul. And once again, Pendergrass showing the speed and his ability to get outside. Sanford riding him into the equipment outside of the lines here. Got to learn to back off a little bit there. Pendergrass delivering the stiff arm, but you got to ease off once you ride the ball carrier out of bounds. So they'll place it at the 13. Pendergrass, again, the lone setback. Hands it off to Pendergrass again, touchdown. Jim Grobe's got to think about a two-point conversion here. We're in the fourth quarter. I think Jim Grobe's going to go for two. Eleven thirty-seven left. I'm not sure. Yeah, and it's 
And it's Swank who will go out there. You got a lot of time left here. That's interesting. And and not a bad decision at all. A lot of coaches say take the point. It's too early. There are a lot of coaches out there that would go for two now that we're in the fourth quarter. So he chooses to go for the one. About, uh, that was easy. Yeah, this how, run. How about Pendergrass and getting a great block? Russell Neenan. Uh, looked like Neenan is cutting the defender to his knees, and Pendergrass really starting to flash some speed. And finally, Wake Forest successfully able to run the football here in the early season. 12 yards to the end zone. He saw the celebration. At there's nothing pretentious at all about this program, about the guys on this team. They they tend to remember where they came from, and where this program was just a few short years ago. So Skinner takes him right down the field for Jim Grove in a six-point lead. Look at the numbers. Skinner, obviously the man who runs the show, 23 of 30. And uh, we don't have a head. It, look, it does. It looks like the Riddler from Batman there with a question mark. Bolden. <laughs> Where's the Joker? <laughs> so we did, I guess we didn't have his his headshot, riddle, but he is on the field. Riddle me this, Terry. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Now, uh, if you're awake, you're thinking, <laughs> "All right, we took the lead. We're up by six, but now we got to face Jevin Sneed again. We figure out a way to stop him." Trying to get outside at the 25 yard line. That's where they'll start. Sneed, first and 10, dangerous pass, almost picked off. Kevin Patterson's already picked one off today and almost had another one. Now, so many times fans think that on an out route, it's the cornerback that's going to make the play. But as a quarterback, you got to be cognizant of the underneath defender getting out under your out route. Harris gets the depth and then has the leaping ability. Really might have had a shot, Terry, to pick that football off. Three of six in the second half for Sneak. But an impressive one to the end zone in the last drive. Reloads, throws it down the field. That could have been picked off. Don't think he ever saw Chip Vaughn inching toward the sideline. Now Sneed is taking another shot. He has not been shy and taking his cracks down the field. That is an impressive effort by Chip Vaughn to come over the top, keep his depth. If he makes a mistake there, lets that ball get over his head, it's a touchdown. But you've got over 11 minutes left in the game. You don't have to get this back right away. And you got to have some patience. Scrambling, throwing, on the run, overthrows the intended receiver, Mike Wallace. Who did have a step on Brandon G. Now we knew Riley Skinner had mobility, but Jevin Sneed has been very impressive. He missed that ball, but he had the right idea. And I've been very, very impressed by the way he has kept his eyes down the field and has been able to try to take advantage of plays on the move. So I'm saying my bad to Mike Wallace. You know, he hadn't been sacked today either. That was a tough throw. Offensive line doing the job and Sneed, very mobile. Alfonso Smith, a fair catch to one knee up at the 37 yard line. 38 yard punt. First and 10, going to hand it off right to the line of scrimmage. Trying to have the third straight year of a winning season. You know who was the ACC golf champ the last time they did it? Arnold Palmer. That's the last time they had three straight winning seasons. <laughs> Living over in the dorm. Wow. 37 seasons between conference championships. Jim Grove 
arguably the coach who gets the most out of his players of any coach in the football bowl subdivision. Five receivers in. Quick out, complete to Adams. Breaks away from one. Jamarcus Sanford then wrapped them up. Senior from Batesville, Mississippi. And the leading tackler a year ago, but Josh Adams, they get their backs involved, obviously, not just running the football, but fourth catch of the afternoon for Josh Adams. Well, Tyrone Nix's defense has done some nice things. You know, Sanford has played well at safety. Front seven has played tough, but Riley Skinner getting the ball out so quickly. He's frustrated this defense at times. Now the third down, though, see if they can pick this up. Third and three, Skinner, quick throw behind Ben Wooster, but that's close to a first down. As advertised here in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, Terry Gannon along with David Norrie, 27 to 21. Wake Forest got out early with the first touchdown off of a turnover, but Jevin Sneed, the transfer from Texas, who battled Colt McCoy back as a freshman and lost that job, transferred, sat out a year, and now getting a chance to run the show in Oxford, brought them right back. But it's been a back-and-forth game, and actually, David, from every aspect, offensively, defensively, special teams, it's been a heck of a college football game. It really has, and we've had some big plays defensively, some interceptions, some key turnovers in the special teams, but I think what has really stood out in this game has been the play of Jevin Steed. We've seen why he had that close competition with Colt McCoy down at Texas. It looks like Wake Forest picked up the first down here, and then, of course, Riley Skinner, number 11 for the Demon Deacons, operating and a big numbers type of day for Riley. Really two great college quarterbacks. Jevin Sneed becoming one perhaps, but a great potential. He's got everybody excited in Oxford. But Riley Skinner, the guy is a junior. He runs this show and as precise as anyone in that pocket. Throws it to Chip Brinkman. And a gain of a couple, his fourth catch of the afternoon. Skinner, the all-time winningest quarterback in the history of Wake football, last year led the season in completion percentage, and the ACC Rookie of the Year the year before that. Had a tough game last year in the opener against BC. You had that game, missed a couple after that with a shoulder injury, but has come back. Yeah, and, and even in that BC game, threw for 353 yards. He's the type of quarterback where you can put the game on his shoulders. Play action, quick throw, far sideline. Bolden's had a big afternoon. DJ Bolden spins away from one across midfield. He's in double digits. He's got 10 catches on the afternoon. Well, they really trust Riley Skinner to spread the ball around. They trust him to make those high degree of difficulty throws, the dangerous throws like that last ball to Bolden outside. Jim Grobe knows that his quarterback puts a premium on ball security and not turning the football over. I know it's a non-league game, but it's a big matchup for both teams. Wake coming in ranked in the top 20 against an SEC foe. This would be a big win. That one through the hands and could have been picked off. Brinkman was out there. Maybe a little bit too strong. That throw and too high. But for Ole Miss, they're still really trying to find out whether or not this program is back in the first year of Houston Nutt. And can they compete this year in the SEC? Ed Orgeron departs, he's fired as the head coach after three seasons at Ole Miss, but he did not leave the cupboard bare for Houston Nutt. There is more than enough talent to compete game in and game out against the SEC. Same swing on the punt. Marche Green back at his own 10. Calls for the fair catch, and traffic makes it at the 20. So, Jevin Sneed in the offense, a chance with 8.07 left here in Winston-Salem. Got a good one going. The play of the game to this point coming up. Third and 15 for Ole Miss. Sneed running out of time. Hit as he throws short right at the goal line, but a flag comes in. Thrown in the end zone. So they'll sort it out. Jim Grove wondering. 
And it looks like this is going to be a pass interference call potentially against Wake Forest. And Wake Forest guy saying it was yeah. tipped. He was hit as he threw the ball. Well, the question whether the ball was tipped or whether it was Snead's arm. Number 10 of the defense. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Yeah, that is it the question. The ball was not tipped. You heard him say off mic, but just as he was turning the mic off, it was not tipped. Well, and, and the call's going to go against Kevin Patterson, number 10, but I think they got a piece of his arm, not the ball. And that was the case. Well, that play is huge because he had no chance to complete that pass well, once he Miss, got hit. And Ole Miss was going to have, let's watch in the end zone. Boy, that ball is not catchable. I don't like that call at all. There was no chance for a completion no. on that ball. Uh -uh. That was a big, big break for Ole Miss. And Ole Miss had enough time on the clock where they could have tried a field goal and then utilize their last time out to try to get a three and out and get the ball back with more than a minute to go. Now Ole Miss back in business. Cook and Bolden out of the eye from the 13. Here comes Bolden. Looks for room down to the 10. Ran right into the arms of Stanley Arnoux. Boy, you hate to see calls in, in those situations, especially on an uncatchable ball. That's the type of call that can influence, you know, the way this game is ultimately decided. Now we'll miss free to work the clock. Wake Forest still with two timeouts. Jim Grobe has to think about maybe start calling timeouts here to save some time if Ole Miss takes the lead. Sneed with time. Corner of the end zone overthrows the intended. <laughs> SEC crew working this game here on the road against an ACC team. So it brings up third down. And I don't think now with less than two minutes to go, if Ole Miss does not convert here on the third down, they can pick up a first down inside the three-yard line. But, Terry, if they don't pick up the first down, I think they have to go on fourth down. Yeah. Yeah. They only have one timeout left. Minute 46, not enough time to kick a field goal. Wild Rebel formation, the cluster. In at quarterback, the flags come in, and the Wake Forest guy saying there was movement on the left side of the offensive line. We'll see if they're right. Prior to the snap, false start, number 50 on the offense, still third down. And Daryl Harris, left guard, moved early. If you're Wake Forest on defense, you want to keep everything in front of you. You just don't want a ball to be completed in the end zone. And for Jevin Sneed, Terry, he has to realize here that you don't need to pick it up on third down. Don't get too greedy and stare down a fourth and 15 or a fourth and 13. Be sure that you pick up a big enough chunk if you don't get into the end zone so you have a chance to pick up the first down. First down wise, he's got to get within the three. Quick out, Bolden fighting his way down to the five. Ball's loose, out of bounds, but they'll mark it just inside the five. G and Smith hit him simultaneously. And Sneed, Sneed did a good job. He knew that potentially he wouldn't pick up the first down. He came underneath, and now all of a sudden, Ole, Smith, Ole Miss with a, a very makeable fourth down opportunity. The fumble comes in front of the chains. The ball goes out beyond the chains, but they bring that fumble back. Clock continues to run. Houston Nutt wants the timeout. And that's his final run. He's going to run out there and argue now. I'm not sure what Houston Nutt's getting excited about there, but it doesn't hurt him to use that timeout. Minute 26, plenty of time. The game's on the line here. He needs to pick up this first down or the game's over. Well, we were told that Houston Nutt might be questioning the down and distance and not just the time. Looks like he's satisfied. There will be one minute, 26, 26 seconds left on the clock, 25 second play clock, and we will wind the clock. There was no timeout charged Ole Miss. I think what happened was 
the play clock was running out. Houston Nutt burned the timeout, and the play clock wasn't right. Right, and it's as we and it caused him to burn the timeout. So they, they say, okay, you're right. You give him the timeout back. You got 25 seconds. Set the play clock. It's a, a minute 26, and now counting. Yeah, as we first surmise, they wanted to burn more clock. Fourth and two. Sneed's got to pick this up. Running back the other way, looking for someone. Touchdown! Over the middle, Cordera Eason. But remember, we're still tied. We got a 27 27 game. Joshua Sheen on for the extra point. The all important extra point. Rob Park, the holder. The previous play is under review. <laughs> so they're going to take a look at all of them now, <laughs> just to make sure. Now, this has been a heavy, heavily officiated 30 seconds. And how about the play by Jeff and Snead? Oh, just to buy time. Time and time again, he has used his feet to buy extra time. He knows the game is on the line, tries the right side, the left side, back to his right. And to find probably the least likely receiver in the end zone for the hookup, Cordera Eason. Watch it put a handle on it for him. What are they taking a look at? Now what possibly well, could you look at? The ball came loose there after the celebration, but that play is going to stand in a very important extra point coming up. The call on the field was confirmed. Touchdown. So what you've done now, though, is ice the, the kicker <laughs> effectively. Well, this is going to be obviously an important extra point, but a minute one left on the clock. Two timeouts for Wake Forest. Jim Grobe and Riley Skinner are going to have their chance to come back down the field. Sheen for the extra point. And it's good. So Ole Miss on the road here in ACC country with a one point lead with a minute one left. Wake Forest with two timeouts. Ole Miss has one timeout. You've got a minute one left, and Houston Nuts team just took the lead. 28 27. But time for Riley Skinner to do some damage. 15 play drive, 80 yards, and over seven minutes off the clock on that last drive. What a drive, and what a game by Jevin Sneed. Welcome back to college football, Mr. Sneed. Justin Sparks to kick it off. Alfonso Smith back deep. Now bring it out to the 20. Now you got a veteran leader to bring him out for Wake Forest and try to march down the football field. Well, this touchdown was so similar to an earlier touchdown where Sneed bought time back and forth behind the line of scrimmage, found Dexter McCluster for the big play. How about the concentration, the toughness takes a big hit, and then Houston Nutt reacting to the Rebels taking the lead on fourth and two. All right, Wake Forest taking over at the 20. Skinner, 27 of 35 for 225 yards and a couple of touchdowns today. Looking, throws to his fullback, a little bit behind or in threat, but able to hang on. Well, there is all sorts of time, especially with two timeouts under your belt. Clock stops on first downs. Clock stops when the ball goes out of bounds inside two minutes. Plenty of time. In fact, Jim Grobe wouldn't be out of the question for him to have to take some time off the clock at the end of the game. And remember that uh, the new rules uh, don't apply in the last two minutes of each half. Timing-wise, 53 seconds in eternity if you're looking for a field last goal. play has been challenged. We will look at the review. Yeah, they're going to take a look at whether Rin Frett was juggling the football when he went out of bounds. Yeah, it was. He was definitely juggling the football at some point. Whether or not he had control as he went out of bounds, 
we'll see. But it was a gain of six, and he got out of bounds. A 15 play drive by Mississippi to take the lead. It has been back and forth all afternoon. Ball was thrown behind Renfred. A nice job to secure it. Yeah, from I that think angle, that's going to tell. Yeah, it's certainly you don't see anything to overrule it. He secures the football there, right foot down. I think he got the right foot down with the ball secure before the left foot stepped on the sideline. That's it secure right about there, and then the left foot steps out. That's going to stand. Play stands is called on the field. Timeout is charged to Ole Miss. That is their last timeout. All right, so it stands, so they're charged the timeout because of that, and they're out of timeouts. But that last drive is one of those that can define you as an offense, as a quarterback, as you're trying to take control of an offense and set the, the tone for the rest of the season. If it stands. <laughs> if the lead stands. Yes. Out of the gun is Skinner. Quick throw, quick out, hauled in. That's a catch, and he got out of bounds first down. Marshall Williams with a touchdown catch earlier this afternoon. Well, I don't think they're going to review that one, Terry, but that was a pretty ball to the outside. Watch Skinner shade him. The outside shade and a nice catch with the hands by Williams along the sideline. Yeah, pretty throw, pretty catch. First and ten. Skinner with time. Good coverage downfield, though. Finally throws it away. No, good coverage in the secondary. And when you talk defense on this clock drive, you know, the decision is Tyrone Nix, the defensive coordinator. Does he come with heat? Do you bring a fifth or a sixth man on the rush? Or do you play heavy in the secondary? You know, just trying to get in a position for this man, one of the best in college football, to take a shot. Sam Swain. It's a great plus that Lake has this year. Over the middle and wide open is Bogan. Mississippi rushed four. And a nice job by Riley Skinner stepping up into the pocket. Bolden ran a very crisp dig route. And now Wake Forest starting to get in position, starting to smell it. First down at the 46 of Ole Miss. Skinner to his tight end. Ben Wooster stayed in bounds. I think he used a timeout here. They wound the clock. They say he didn't get out of bounds. Yeah, he's brought down. It's a good tackle along the sideline. And the good use of the timeout. Timeout. Wake Forest. Please reset the game clock to 24 seconds. So you've got 24 seconds left, and Wake has one timeout now. Wooster, the man, shaking up. So we got uh, 24 seconds of action game time left here in Winston Salem. We got second and eight, David, with 24 seconds left here. And with one timeout left, it leaves you the ability to run or pass the football here. I think Ole Miss has to think about bringing some pressure. You know, Wake Forest down on the cusp of Sam Swank's range as a field goal kicker. Pressure. Here it comes. Skinner gets away, fires it near side, flag on the play. Contact all the way. Marche Green trying to defend Josh Adams. But credit Skinner with getting away from the initial rush. And Wake Forest, even against the Blitz, was able to free release Patrick Josh Harris Adams. On the defense, number eight. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. And what that means, a free release is a back, releases out of the backfield without a blocking assignment, even on the blitz. And you leave Marche Green on an island. That's the risk that you run by bringing two on the blitz. Boy, at the end of the route, I think it comes here a little bit earlier. Out of the slot, Adams, balls in the air, and there's the contact at about the 18 yard line. Not a lot of contact, but enough to knock Josh Adams off his route, and Wake Forest keeps the timeout. 
So they place it down at the 29. Sam Swank, by the way, has hit one from 53 yards in his career. Under pressure again, quick out, loose to the tight end. He gets out of bounds. Just in front of Jeremy McGee. Swank getting ready on the sidelines. Now the big boys up front engaging Ole Miss, giving Riley Skinner just enough move, move uh, room to operate. And Skinner's done a nice job, Terry, of picking receivers when they've been in front of the chains. He's picked receivers that have been on their way towards the sidelines and have been able to get out of bounds. All-time leader in points at Wake Forest, Sam Swank, not far off the ACC record. Quick out behind Marshall Williams. Safety blitz by Sanford, the strong safety. More pressure from Mississippi. And right now, Terry, they're looking at about a, oh, I'd say about a 41-yard field goal. Yep. Well within Sam Swank's range. Sam Swank, one of the premier field goal kickers in the country. Wow, what a game. Big third and five coming up. Ole Miss showing blitz. Here they come. Skinner throws it away. Going to give his kicker a chance. And Sam Swain comes onto the field. Two for two already today. Boy, it looked like Riley Skinner had a lot of confidence in Sam Swain yeah. there coming off the field, didn't it? Clapping his hands. That was a heck of a drive engineered by Riley Skinner, the junior. Just outside the 31. And it'll be a 41 yard attempt. Eight seconds left. It comes down to this. Swank, can he win it for Wake? And they'll call the timeout. That's timeout. their last timeout. Wake Forest, that is their last timeout of the second half. Man, this has been a good one. Swank, the senior from Jacksonville Beach Florida and a guy who came in just 96 points away from the all time record in the ACC active leader in terms of field goals there's none better in college football and it comes down to his shoulders right now now well, today's Chevrolet players of the game Jevin Sneed Riley Skinner the two quarterbacks in recognition of their efforts Chevrolet will make a one thousand dollar contribution to each university's general scholarship fund may change that <laughs> if Swank is able to make this. Here it is. From forty one yards. And it's good. Three seconds left, and Sam Swank had plenty of leg. Cool as a cucumber. And I guess there was a reason for Riley Skinner's confidence as he came off the field. And think about this, not only Wake Forest fans watching this one, but ACC fans, I think, watching this one saying, come on, you can't lose this one at home. We've taken a beating in the media for what we've done so far and now against the SEC and it just does stay inside. Swank swinging that right foot with a lot of rhythm. How about those drives 15 play drive by Ole Miss to take the lead. Great leadership by Jevin Sneed and then Riley Skinner comes right back down the field and sticks a knife in the heart of the old Miss faithful and unless Houston Nuts Club can come up with a miracle now with three seconds left on this kick what a heartbreaker Boy, we've seen some football this week going back to that game on Monday night doesn't get much more exciting than this the ACC's pride on the line against the SEC
Here we go. From the 15, almost lost it out to the 34 they come, and that's it. Final seconds off the clock. Sam Swank, the hero of this one. Houston Nutt, so close with Jevin Sneed having a great day as quarterback, but on the road, they lose it to Wake Forest. The ACC able to top the SEC in this one. Your final, Wake Forest 30, and Ole Miss 28 from Winston-Salem. Two-point victory for Riley Skinner. Had another great day as the leader of the offense for Wake. Number 20 wins again and moves on. It wasn't easy, though. At home, 30 to 28. Swank the hero. He's done it more than once in his career. For David Norrie and our entire crew, I'm Terry Gannett. So long, everybody, from Winston-Salem.